Hello there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. Um, first of all, I, I feel like when we're talking about the love reading, um, there are two, clearly two people that you're dealing with, okay? And uh, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I feel like across the two spreads, um, both of your spreads have a common theme and a common message. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, it's really, really, really important for you to kind of um, get a move on with your life, okay? Focusing on the things that make you feel good, the things that make you feel valuable, like you're contributing to the greater picture, you're contributing to humanity, you're contributing and on your own path to achieving your own wealth, achieving your own resources and being self-sufficient. And being self-sufficient is not just, you know, um, paying the bills for yourself and, and, um, and things like that. It's more being emotionally sufficient, feeling like you can take care of your own emotional needs and that other people um, cannot fulfill that aspect of you. Um, coming to the realization of that, okay? Um, nowadays, we rely so much on a relationship partner, a crush to fulfill things that we kind of unfairly um, allocate for them to fulfill, right? And um, I feel like the best way to explain that is it's sort of like um, if you like somebody, right? And uh, you give a lot of your time and your energy and it's not a relationship yet, but you know, you like somebody, you either have a crush on them or you just have a lot of feelings for them and we start to reach out to them right and if we're not getting the response that we're hoping for we can become a little bit resentful like i'm putting in so much energy so much effort and they're not reciprocating and it's also that that the thrill of the chase and the excitement associated with the unknown and also that communication is he is she going to respond and and things like that it's the anticipation that can also build up this sense of excitement. And I feel like we're kind of addicted to it. You know, we're addicted to the adrenaline rush, the, the highs and the lows. And I feel like over time, it can feel very, very, very taxing. It can feel very emotionally draining. And I feel like for some of you, you're almost at that point, okay? I see you reaching out uh, to somebody, but I, I feel like the, 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 the communication is more on the platonic level and um, you're hoping maybe one day it'll change, maybe one day it'll change. And so I feel like you're not getting that reciprocity that you, that you need. But at the same time, you feel, you, you feel this undercurrent between the two of you, like the, the chemistry, the, the connection, it's very undeniable. But it's also really hard to get past that friend zone, to get past that platonic stage. And um, because of that, I, I do sense that many of you are, you know, you don't have a choice but to kind of cut your losses and try to focus on other things, okay? Um, and then others of you, there's another relationship partner or somebody that you're dealing with. And um, there's a lot of... Um, chemistry and excitement and, and things like that. But I feel like across the, the board, both of these spreads are indicating to me, whenever you are independent, whenever you do things on your own, you take initiative, you get things started. And um, I feel like things go without a hitch. Things go without a hitch whenever you're on your own, whenever you do whatever it is you're divinely guided to do. And you might have, you know, a lot of jobs, a lot of ideas, a lot of things that you want to do with your life. A lot of hobbies too. I see a lot of people who are very creative, either, you know, a mixture of um, um, visual artists, people that are really good at, you know, uh, drawing, molding, sculpting, um, creating something. And then I feel like that has been your emotional outlet throughout your life. You know, whenever you're sad, you doodle. And then I also see people who are very, very talented musically, either singing uh, or with musical instruments or they really, really appreciate um, arts and crafts and music. And, you know, those have been, the, the creative fields have been your creative outlet. And I also feel like a lot of the times too, when you are 
it's it's almost like、um, relationship partners are like your muse. They inspire you to to draw. They inspire you to create. They inspire you to love and appreciate music. And I almost feel this element of、um, in the past, you might have listened to you know love songs, whatever the、like、cheesy love songs or whatever、um, is. Whatever strikes your fancy, but you never really understood what people meant in the lyrics, right?、Um, it seems like every love song is the same. It's so cliched, but lately, because you have someone has stirred passion within you, and because you feel kind of like you might have been too busy to, you know,、uh, use your creative outlets as a way to channel your Uh, creative energy, and all of a sudden the songs they just they 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 sound so relevant, they sound so pertinent to everything that you're dealing with, and you're just like, wow, I've never felt this way before. And now listening to this, it feels like this person, you know, was dealing with the same things that I'm dealing with, and they're writing about it, and and I'm I'm listening to it, and it resonates. It's sort of like that. Um. Finding relevance in those love songs that you might not have understood in the past. So I definitely feel, you know, your heart chakra is is open, as well as your base chakra, where there is immense sexual energy,、um, and the the sexual energy can also be channeled into creative energies to create to、uh, to make something.、Um, so that's what I'm feeling here. There's a lot of.、Um, There's a lot of energies for creation, and you know, for those who are、um, fertile and you know uh, of um, fertile age, you want to be very careful about、um, unwanted pregnancies and all of that. Okay, so that's on the the short snippet of things.、Um, this creative energy can move mountains. It can be redirected and channel, and it will be able to kind of like、um, propel you to a new phase in your life. But I also feel like it's a little bit trapped on the relationship front. It's a little bit too channel, too focused on the relationship front, and not enough of it is focused on self care. Not enough of it is focused on doing you,、um, channeling this creative energy so that you can create things, so that you can, you know,、uh, fulfill that that need for you to create, that need for you to.、Um, Make something out of nothing, and and I feel like in a way, you know, a lot of Sagittarius people,、um, well, fire signs in general, you need to create, you need to build, you need to create something from scratch, and、um, I feel like that brings a great sense of satisfaction. So you have a lot of energy here, and I feel like it needs to be devoted towards self care, self maintenance, as well as taking better care of yourself. Okay, just on the emotional front, doing things that you enjoy, hiking.、Um, Outdoor activities, doing creative projects. I feel like that's where、uh, it's meant to go. Okay. So in the love department, this is your energy here. This is what you're bringing to the table. I have here the Eight of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles is、uh, it's a work card. It's like the the worker bees of the entire you know 78 cards in the deck. Okay. This looks like managing a lot of different projects, going to work, and also feeling like the workday is a little bit monotonous. Feeling like every day is just same old, same old. You know, going to the, going through the grind, nose to the grindstone, and keeping your head low, and just you know, getting everything that's expected of you to be done. You might work in a system where you have quotas. You have to meet your daily,、um, you know,、um, quota, your daily numbers, and it just feels overall a little bit uninspiring. Okay, on the one hand,、um, finances seems to be going well. On the other hand, it just feels like uninspiring. It feels like there must be more to this life. There must be more to what I'm doing. There must be a better place for me to apply my skills. And、um, I feel as well. Many of you are very, very grateful、um, to have the abundance in your life right now, or at least you're creating. You're starting to create that abundance. So you're not ungrateful that oh, I'm at this job. You know, it's not strenuous. It's not overly strenuous. I'm not at least outdoors in the、um, midday sun,、uh, wasting away doing construction or something like that, or doing some really strenuous activity for a living. 
I'm at least, you know, in an environment where I can deal with papers, I can deal with things that are predictable, and at least, you know, I have a salary, I have benefits, and, and things like that. So you are innately taking stock of everything that you have, so you are very grateful and thankful. But I feel like you want a break in the routine. You're looking for a break in your routine. And so naturally, the break in the routine can be something that stirs your passion, okay? And that's why I would say the creative outlet serves to be a better channel for you to find that break in the routine, find that personal enjoyment. What I feel you doing instead though is um, venturing off and looking at relationships, okay? So this is the Ace of Wands. This is passion. It's almost like molten lava. It's really, really hot. It's really hot passion, chemistry, uh, excitement that you feel towards another person. For some of you, it could be another fire sign, um, another Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo. For others, it could be an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And either way, this is really intense passion and chemistry. It's, it's almost like I can't really touch this person. I'm going to get burned. Um, it, it's that heavy and it's that intense. And um, when I get this card, I look at the scars. It, it always draws me. And it's almost like I've reached out so many times. And I feel like I, feel like I can't do it anymore. Some of you might have reached out to another person. And I feel like you're waiting for the response and it's it's not the exactly the response that you you want or you you were expecting and then I also feel like you know you've had your own um, bad shares of relationships relationship partners that made you question your self-esteem relationship partners that um, didn't care about you and didn't devote to you and didn't you know appreciate everything that you had to offer and so you come in with a little bit of a chip on your shoulders, trying to make this relationship work. And it can be very disheartening when at the end of the day, we realize that somebody is not really reciprocating our uh, emotions or they're not providing that emotional um, nurturing for us. And over and over again, you are a sign that forgives. You, you forgive people. You understand that people have their deficits. And I feel like, yes, there's great chemistry here, but it, it seems almost like out of touch, out of reach. Somebody's out of reach. Somebody is either not responding, they, they could be ghosting, or somebody is just clearly out of reach. And if I reach out too hard, too fast, or, you know, come on too strong, I might get burned. The partner that you're dealing with, I have the High Priestess. This is a spiritual leader, okay? This is somebody that really enjoys their own company, okay? Um, this is also somebody, somebody that is guided by divine principles. Um, they hide their emotions really well, okay? I almost feel like this person is either a spiritual leader, uh, uh, somebody who's very, very spiritual. They could be very religious. Or they are just somebody that's like, I'm, I'm okay by myself. I'm going to, you know, take the time off and be by myself, be on my own. They love their own company. They have a lot of wisdom and knowledge and insights into human character as well. So I feel like they are aware of the connection that you have between the two of you. They're not, you know, stupid. They, they feel things and they, they feel the vibrations before the, the, the physical thing even appears. So it's almost like, you know how you Sagittarius people tend to walk a little fast? You have either, you walk fast or you, um, you, you move in a very deliberate way. You get things done. And it's almost like when they're around you, you know, even before you turn the corner, they can feel the vibrations of your footsteps. So they're that sensitive. They're, they are aware of your presence. They are aware of... Um, when you turn the corner, when you're in the same room, there could be a lot of other people. They are very aware of your presence and they might even notice you. But I feel like their energy is one that is very platonic. And they're forcing themselves to be this way. Um, there's an element here of something being out of reach, something being not appropriate, something being kind of forbidden or something that is a little bit taboo. 
uh, uh, w between you and somebody that you're interested in. And so they're kind of like playing the role of the onlooker rather than the pursuer. And Sagittarius, you have a natural tendency to pursue, you know, you're a cardinal sign, you get things started. And when you go, when you feel the object of your affection, you beeline it for that person. And so your intentions, your feelings are actually very, very clear. I just want you to understand that. Uh, the way you feel about another person is very, very crystal clear. They are aware of how you feel about them. And the energy flows mutually because this Ace of Wands is in the center of this love spread. It means that on both sides, you both feel it, okay? There's no denying chemistry is really strong and there's no denying there is really strong passion and just uh, desire and um, you know that, that physical attraction that we have towards another person. You find them mysterious. You find them very um, you find them very caring but very aloof. They give great advice. They give great wisdom and they, they have like a, a, a ton of just life experiences under their belt. But I also feel like there's an element here of a, a divide, a, almost like an emotional divide between two people. And it's, it's really hard to bridge, okay? And so the other person I feel like that you're dealing with as well, we have here the Queen of Swords. This is an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I feel like it might even be the same person. There's an air of aloofness about them. Um, the, the blues, the iciness, the cold, I feel like somebody feels like you bring a lot of great passion into their life. Okay. It's almost like this flame is so overwhelming. It's so nice. They've been out in the cold for quite some time. And so they want to come by and, you know, warm up their hands, warm up their hearts. Um, nearby this fire that you've kind of stirred up within them. So you're definitely being noticed, but I feel like there's a lot of um, lack of activity coming in from the partner. And I feel like it can make you really question your reality. Like, if they like me, why won't they come forward to me? And if they like me, why won't they make their feelings known? I've made my feelings known, right? As a cardinal sign, that's how we do things. We, we go for our object of affection and we tell them how we feel. But I see a lot of uh, closed off energy. It seems as if the person that you're dealing with, they're stuck in some type of a limbo here with the hangman. They're in a situation where they want to reach out too, but they're tied and tethered to other things. Possibly a home, a marriage, another family, another relationship. Or they're at a point in their life right now where they're focusing on themselves and how to, you know, better themselves that they can't give you what they feel you deserve. So somebody that you're dealing with is that spiritually evolved where they see the reality of a situation and as a result of it, they're, they're holding back. They're holding back. But rest assured, I definitely feel that they know the connection is there. They feel the connection. And in a way, they, they, they know how you feel about them. They really, really know on a deep intrinsic level that this chemistry, it's, uh, it's, it's not just physical desire. It stems from something deeper. It stems from, you know, two souls trying to create a union with each other and even past life energies. But there are so many things, entanglements that they need to take care of from their end and they're not able to make an offer to you. Okay? Um, so my advice for you is to draw back and let them come forward. Let them kind of uh, warm themselves up first, okay? They've been in some type of isolation chamber. They've been kind of cold and distant, mainly because they weren't getting that attention, that love and that um, reciprocity in their own relationships. So this is only no the only way they know how to act. And as a result of it, they're, they can't go from zero to 60. They need to gradually warm up, test out the waters, sort things out from their life. And so you want to, you know, they need to be the ones to cut themselves free. 
you're not coming in as the knight in shining armor, rescuing anybody. People need to move on their own time. You know, the Queen of Swords, she's got a sword, right? It's not depicted in this picture. And that man, he's like hanging by some type of a rope, right? So the natural inclination is use that sword to cut yourself free. But they're not ready yet. So everything is going to happen in divine timing. And as much as I hate saying it to you, Sagittarius, um, you just have to wait. Okay? I'm sorry about that. Um, other areas of your life, there is another spiritual advice that's coming through. And um, I feel like you might have an earth sign. And um, this might be somebody that you have children with, okay? Um, so I see like a family unit, possibly a marriage, a, a house, a housing situation, and things like that. So I feel like there are some, um, it's like family loyalties being tested. That's what I'm feeling. Um, so, for example, if um, if you're dealing with parents that are, you know, splitting up, separating or divorcing, uh, the children are talking about, like, who's going to take care of mom? Who's going to take care of dad? Who's going to volunteer their house to allow mom to live in and then allow dad to live in? So I see those conversations um, brewing. They're not like out in the open because, you know, that's kind of tactless. And it's our parents, so we don't really have those calculating thoughts. But I feel like these are practical considerations that are happening in real time. So there's an element here about somebody purchasing a home and then having conversations. And I, I feel this in the Four of Wands as well as the Ace of Wands. Uh, marriage and then, you know, housing purchases, new properties, uh, new place of dwelling, new place of employment even. But I feel like somebody is um, saying, okay, well, I'm getting married. Um, there might be marriages um, happening with your children. There might be uh, as well, even moving the relationship to the next level and attending weddings, attending parties and things like that, or discussions about wedding that you're going to hear about. And some, I, I'm hearing some people like with children in particular, if you are of retirement age and you know, um, you're thinking about where to settle, I feel like the kids want you to live with them. There might be, you know, children coming into to the picture and they want you to be around to watch the kids grow, but also to take care of the kids. And you would gladly do that. And there's also an element of you needing to move things along in your life and don't and not let life stag, uh, stagnate. Um, so I see those elements coming through. I also feel like if you are with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and uh, you're in a relationship there might be like a change in your living situation a change in your living environment or like some type of arguments coming through where the family loyalty is going to be tested okay so i have this earth sign here taurus virgo capricorn this is somebody that is really 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 slow to act they lack initiative and they they scan the horizon they they wait 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 for the right signal and they never will act if it were up to them nothing would get done the moss would be growing um the the plants the the grass everything would be overgrowing okay so you're trying to get them moving i feel like either a change in residence talking about changing residence and I feel like there are a lot of good news that are coming into the picture, but I feel like you're frustrated with somebody because of their lack of incentive. Their lack of incentive, their lack of ability to reciprocate, or their lack of ability to bring... It's like bring... You know, like imagine you're going to a potluck and everybody's bringing something, right, to contribute. And this person doesn't. And over and over and over again, they don't. And it's like, how do you talk to them do you become tactless and just tell them hey stop being so selfish or do you enable that behavior by just sweeping it under the rug so i feel like there's that element there and um sagittarius you're not usually a confrontational sign you're not okay um but i feel like some things need to be said to maintain that balance there's a natural balance to the universe and i feel like if we sense the imbalance we need to address it we need to redirect that energy and if we want people to do certain things, we need to verbalize it. We need to verbalize it. We can't fault somebody for not doing what we want them to do if we never address that with them, right? It sounds like intuitive, right? But as humans, we behave in ways that are very emotionally irrational. 
we get mad at people and at situations um, for, you know, not being able to read your mind, you know, like not being able to read what um, to, to know what we want and what we expect them to do when we never properly address it. So there are things here where you you're going to have to kind of change the way that you behave and change the way in which you deal with another person. You definitely need to be more verbal and expressive for sure because what you feel is a lot of passion but on the flip side of it it's also a lot of aggression and rage okay and so I apologize but I'm gonna have to say this um, don't be on the sideline and soak and get pissy if you're not getting what you want from another person when all along you have not communicated what you wanted okay so there's that element coming through and for those of you who might get you know um, offended okay keep in mind I'm a Sagittarius moon and I feel like a lot of the times you know Sagittarius moon you guys are very spiritual by nature and you do a lot for um, other people you intuitively sense what they need and you take care of them okay and even Sagittarius Sun and it's not like you, you don't do things with strings attached, but I feel like it's really hard for you to talk about your needs and it's really hard for you to express yourself and tell other people because you don't want to infringe upon their right, right? Their free will. Um, but, you know, it needs to be said, okay? So I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. It's a little bit scattered. Um, I'm still, you know, a little bit sick, so I don't know how much of it is me being sick and how much of it is just the energy that's flowing through, but I hope the reading is helpful for you guys and I hope it's relevant and I hope that it is helpful in not, in helping you navigate this week, okay? But either way, take care of yourself, Sagittarius, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.